Welcome. Today I want to talk about Friedrich B. E. Schleiermacher. Um, in my opinion, there is no theologian who has been more misunderstood or more mischaracterized as Schleiermacher has been, at least as far as modern theologians are concerned. And this is in large part uh, due to how difficult he can be to understand. So in this video I hope to dispel a few of the myths about Schleiermacher, as well as explain a couple points about his theology. Um, now these five minutes are not meant to be exhaustive, um, nor are they um, trying to give you an overview of every single aspect of Schleiermacher's theology, but I do hope to um, just give you a bit of an introduction to his work and hopefully uh, convince you to take up the task of reading him for yourself. There, in no way is this a replacement for uh, doing that, for reading his theology, um, but I do hope it encourages you to do that. So with that said, let's begin. Um, I really only want to talk about one particular aspect of Schleiermacher's theology, um, or mostly one particular aspect, and that is the often misunderstood concept of the feeling of absolute dependence. Now, this comes from his great dogmatic work, Christian Faith, um, and it is often seen, um, wrongly seen, as an attempt to subjectivize the Christian faith, um, to make it turn it into a projection of our own ideas up into heaven, or in some sense like Feuerbach's concept of theology as anthropology. Now this is a mistake about Schleiermacher's theology, and I want to explain, explain why. Um, so there are a few points I want to make to kind of dispel this misunderstanding. The first one is that Schleiermacher is, above all else, perhaps a theologian of grace. Um, grace is a central concept to his thought, um, and one that often gets overlooked. But the the important point of that is that when he talks about the feeling of absolute dependence, we have to realize that the context of this is the context of grace. And so the emphasis is then not on the feeling of an individual, but rather on God's activity towards the individual. Um, so the key part of the phrase, the feeling of absolute dependence, is not on the individual's feeling, but rather on the absolute dependence, because it, it begs the question, dependence upon whom or what? And so, of course, the answer is God with that. Um, and so by this change, we already see that Schleiermacher is positing a theology not as an anthropology, but rather he is describing the event, an event that happens in the life of a believer, the event of faith. And now this event is grounded and ultimately sourced from the activity of God towards us. Uh, it is not something that begins in the individual who, who then feels their way up into God, but rather it is God that confronts the individual, and the effect of that encounter is what Schleiermacher is striving to describe with the feeling of absolute dependence. And so the concept of grace is such an important lens through which we can read Schleiermacher's work. Um, in my book on Schleiermacher, I talk about um, Schleiermacher's con doctrine of election, which is extremely fascinating and really sets the tone for a lot of his work. Um, and I do that to explain that the, the concept of grace is so central to his theology. Um, and in some sense, Schleiermacher is restating Anselm's favorite, famous defi definition of theology as faith-seeking understanding with this. Um, and so his dogmatics is a dogmatics of grace, and by Describing uh, faith as a feeling of of sorry, the feeling of absolute dependence is not describing a subjectivist uh, reorientation of theology. That is a that is a misunderstanding. Now, the second important point here is to just briefly note how Schleiermacher organized his great work, his dogmatics, Christian faith. Um, these controversial sections that really deal with the feeling of absolute dependence. Um, they're actually not the most essential aspects of his dogmatics. They're not the foundation of them, at the very least. So he wrote his dogmatics somewhat like a upside-down pyramid, where actually the foundation is the culmination of the work. So it's written in some ways in reverse. The most important sections of the book actually come at the end of the book, um, where Schleiermacher finally gets to the doctrine of God as love, uh, that Christ is our Redeemer, and that God is triune. And so it's actually these doctrines and these emphasis and this emphasis of his work that is the true foundation of everything that came before. Um, and so it's a very tightly constructed dogmatics. Um, but I think we make the mistake. A lot of students make this mistake, at least when they're given Christian faith to read, of too heavily focusing on those early sections where he deals with some of the more auxiliary questions and specifically when he goes into the feeling of absolute dependence. But they fail to realize. Um, that actually the true grounding of his dogmatics is what comes later with that Christ is our redeemer and that God is love. So those are essential aspects to um, his theology. And so finally, I hope that clears up a few of the confusions around this inf infamous phrase, the feeling of absolute dependence. 
Um, or at the very least, I hope that you reconsider your conception of that. Um, it is not a subjectivist phrase, nor is it anthropology. It is just a um, description of the event of faith. <clears throat> but my final point I want to stress is I want to actually step back from that phrase a little bit and talk more about <clears throat> what I feel is one of Schleiermacher's most significant contributions to theology, and that is his doctrine of God. Um, and I actually think this will go a long way in dispelling the myth of um, the feeling of absolute dependence or the misunderstanding of it, I should say. Um, so the genius of Schleiermacher's doctrine of God is its rigorous devotion to a wholly non-speculative approach. Um, a central statement to his dogmatics is this, and I quote, We have no formulation for the being of God as such, distinct from the being of God in the world, end quote. Now this does not equate God with the world in pantheism, rather this indicates a non-speculative approach to how we think of God. So rather than attempting to know God in a vacuum by speculating about what God must be like or what God must do without any empirical basis, Schleiermacher stresses that we must know God according to the actual phenomenon of God's activity in the world, most of all in Jesus Christ. So Schleiermacher's theology is actually highly Christomorphic in this regard. That is, he subjects everything to the doctrine that Christ is our Redeemer. <clears throat> so, God's self-revealing is never spoken into a vacuum, but into the actual conditions of the world. And so that is why his concept of the feeling of absolute dependence is not a speculative approach, but is actually, at its root, a non-speculative path. And so, <clears throat> it is not that we project our concept of God up into the heavens, but rather that God has met us in the phenomenon of revelation, the Word made flesh, and therefore, the only way to know God um, is according to the unity of God's being and act. In short, God is what God does, and what God does, God is. And so there's no division between God's being and act, and thus we cannot speculatively try to decipher the being of God apart from the acts of God in the world. And so, those are the three points I wanted to make. Um, there's obviously so much more I could say about Schleiermacher. He's honestly one of the most fascinating theologians um, that I've read, that I've encountered. Um, but he's also extremely complex and difficult to understand, and I, and I understand that that's somewhat the root of the misunderstanding around him. Um, but I hope he's a theologian that we take more seriously and give more patience to reading um, him. And so I hope this goes a long way in trying to get you to reconsider some of your preconceptions about Schleiermacher, as well as give you a few points about his work that I think are important. Um, he's very easy to caricature, to make into a caricature, but um, I've, my book um, that I've written actually goes a long way in trying to dispel some of these myths, especially from the Bardian perspective. Um, Bart's reading of Schleiermacher is, is, by most Schleiermacher scholars, considered to be quite bad. So, kind of getting past that reading and coming to a new understanding of Schleiermacher, um, in my view, of them being quite close to each other, is, is very helpful and, and very important. And so, with all that said, um, in the next video I'm going to talk about actually how to read Schleiermacher, how to go about reading him, um, the books he's written, uh, particularly how to read his Christian faith, uh, his great dogmatic work, um, especially in to talk about some of the secondary literature on Schleiermacher as well. Um, but for now, for now, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or any feedback. Um, but hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.